Hey, this is Josh from Unit 6, and these are my firsts. First time that I performed was probably when I was like 13, 14, my first band. And basically I got forced to be the singer because no one else wanted to sing in the band. So I was playing guitar in it in my high school band and like no one else wanted to do it. So I did it and I remember the first show we played at like Weybridge Hall. I spent the, about 80% of the show my back to the crowd because I was so nervous. So I just sang at the drummer. So yeah, that was good, wasn't it? Sign of things to come. I think the first band that, well, is a band, but also first like record label that really got me into like music was Drive for Records. And there was a, a girl who was in like year 11 and I was in year seven and she was going around handing out like Finch pins and like Drive for Records stickers and stuff like that. And I went down to my local record store that weekend uh, to Banquet Records and I was like, who's this band Finch? Can I listen to them? And um, John Tolley showed me what it is to burn. And then he was like, if you like this, you're like this, 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 this and this. So I must have bought like 10 or so records from, from Drive Through Records. And I'd heard like bands obviously like Linkin Park and Limp Bizkit and like the more new metal stuff before that. Bands like Incubus, but yeah, that was when I kind of first was like, oh, there's a scene that I can kind of like get into. And yeah, it's very much sort of like the pop punk, emo sort of dry through record scene. First ever time played a show. Yeah, I was like 14, maybe 13 at our local hall. And it was basically like just a mass gathering of all of our mates from our school and a few other schools and just loads of bad music, even worse haircuts, awful moshing. And yeah, I was like, right, this is me. This is what I want to do in my life. But yeah, just a real kind of like baptism fire from like going from never even playing, like ever doing any sort of performance, then suddenly playing a gig in like front of like 150 people that were all your mates. It was kind of strange, but it was wicked because in, when we were first starting trying to be in bands, all of our mates kind of like were our fan base, if that makes sense. They kind of like elevated us and gave us the confidence to go and try and play shows in other venues around Surrey and around the country. So yeah, that was a good like um, a good trial and error and a safe space to do it in as well. The first You Me at Six show was at the Guildford Youth Centre. And basically we we were it was a floor show as all great first shows should be um there was like two or three of our mates bands that were older than us were playing and like a week before our mate was like do you want to play this gig and we we're sort of like we can but we don't have a name we haven't really even got any songs we've got like three songs and she was just like we'll just come play for like 20 minutes so but she's like you need a name for the flyer and we used to have like this um this phrase of just like, oh, you meet at six for like meeting each other up at a certain time at the station or wherever we were meeting to go to, the, to go to watch a local show. So she just put on a flyer and we played a bunch of Finch covers, a bunch of, I can't remember what, I think there was like a Blink cover in there somewhere and a few you meet at six songs, which were awful. And that was our first gig. Well, the first time that we all got a sense that we were, what we were doing potentially be bigger than a hobby was um we played a gig at the Camden Underworld supporting our friends and that night we kind of like managed to build I guess the first Yumi at 16 which was our PR person at the time Karina um our Ray J plugger Haley, and our first ever agent was a guy called Mark and so we had like this this team sort of that were kind of all interested in taking us on and they were like, but you're gonna need a manager because you can't do it yourselves. And we were only like, I think 16, 17. Um, but you know, I think there's a few magazines that come down to that show. And there's a few like, I think like even Atticus, some people from Atticus are down there and they're like, oh, we'll give you some free stuff. And we're sort of like, oh, this is, this is a bit bigger than just your local school hall sort of thing. So yeah, probably then, but I guess the other time that would stand out would be when we headlined the Astoria because it was the first time that all of our parents came to the same show and were just sort of like, 
we had like bootleg merch outside the venue and like actual security guards working the doors and like I don't know, it just felt like obviously it's a historical venue, two thousand people in London. And I think at that time my parents all kind of clocked sort of in cohesion that this was now no longer like a passion project, but maybe something that we could actually viably go off and, you know, make money from, but also, you know, use as a vehicle to travel the world and stuff like that. So maybe those two moments in particular stand out. The first Yumi at Six music video, well, I guess would be say it for the bedroom, but the live version, which was us basically playing at Coco and the Mean Fiddler and us just sort of piss up, pissing about like in the van and stuff. And then we made an actual video for, I want to say like, If I In Your Shoes or Gossip or one of those songs from, from Take For Colours, which were all just very much sort of like, we didn't really know what we were doing. I don't even think the people that were making the videos knew what they were doing. You know, like it was everyone's first time at doing something. So we just sort of like did the classic, let's either perform in front of a white background and try and be arty, arty, or a house party, because that's what all of the Americans were doing. Just like filming themselves, have a house party and the band playing in the living room or whatever. So it was just basically that. There was no like mood board or concept. It was just sort of like, we'll turn up We'll get the cameras out, you lot play, we'll see what happens. And yeah, and that was it, I suppose. I think the first time I felt we made it was, I always thought that as long as we were only playing in England, we were just going to be an English band. And I think the first time we went overseas, we supported Fall Out Boy in Paris at La Cigale. And I remember thinking, all right, we're playing with the big boys now. And like, just felt like, even though it's so stupid, but you know, we. We only played like what 35 minutes and as a support band that no one cared about in Paris but I felt like we were an international band because we got on a, a train over to, to Paris for the day um, and I just felt that like that was maybe the start of internally also the perception of what we could be changing from oh we'll, we'll have a crack at playing England for a few years and then die off I felt like as soon as you could get into other territories um, then you were an international band um, but yeah, I felt that was really pivotal. And I guess additionally to that, like just playing with, I think with the first time we ever did Warp Tour, I felt like we were, we'd arrived, even though it was, you know, 2009, no one in America had even heard a song by Yumi at Six. Um, but I felt like there was a chance if you worked hard and earned it that you could do well there. And that was another point where I thought, okay, we're doing something now, which is just, None of our mates are doing this, so we must be doing something that's another level up, if you like. So yeah, probably those two things.